we spend about $14 million a year on construction projects. That's making rooms like this much better, functioning better, uh, uh, working on heat, and all those kind of things, and just beautifying the campus because we didn't always look that good. Those of us who've been around for a while know how, how unattractive we were as an institution. <coughs> but we said, let's hold off on some of those things that 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 we can put off for a while. Let's hold back on construction projects and only do those that we know required by federal, state, or, or local law in terms of ordinances, or that have to do with safety and health. And saving us about six million dollars. So all of these things that we have put together, and we had looked at travel. There's a lot of travel that goes to this college. A lot of travel. 90% of it is all for the right reasons. And the 10% that, you know, is suspect. But even that 90% that's done for the right reasons, we said, let's take a real good look at that travel. And so therefore, all domestic travel now has to be decided by the vice president of the area. So they get a sense to say, is this something I really want to support? We did it in the past. Is it something I want to support? And all international travel at the institution is now approved by yours truly. Is that the kind of money that we want to spend to send somebody over the pond? And is this the right for, thing for us to do with our funds? And do we need to do this at this time? We're also taking a look at just kind of uh, the way in which we've done things here at the college. You know, we, I won't say we waste money, but we don't always think uh, strategically about, about the way we spend funds. And you know, we, it's, it's, the, it, it's the eating and drinking at Columbia College Chicago. Staff, faculty can tell you almost every meeting they go to, there's food and drink. Not alcoholic drink, but food and drink. We feed each other all the time. Well, that's not our responsibility. We're not supposed to have to pay for the eating and drinking for lunch every time there's a lunch meeting. If the, if the, if, if the meeting wasn't happening, you, you'd go out and buy your own lunch, wouldn't you? So why should we buy? Because there's something going on. And so we're beginning to take a real close look at all of those things, posted and, and paper and just ways in which we can kind of control our spending. And it looks as if we've done a pretty good job. When we're now anticipating a savings this year of between eight and ten million dollars. That's real money. Now, what are we going to do with that money? Well, one thing is that we held tuition down, haven't we? We're holding tuition down. We said, we've got some money, let's hold tuition. Because we know that our expenses are going to go up, and so now we've got a little money maybe that'll help us with those expenses. We're going to do the same thing next year. We're going to hold it down. The other thing, though, that we have to do is that we have to begin to rebuild our endowment. We were smart about it, though. We're not putting it back in the market. Mike has a big pocket that he puts in and over on the side. Because we're not putting it in the market. We're making sure, being very, very careful, very, very conservative, until we're really sure that the market has kind of flattened out, got to the bottom, and we begin to see some help there. We're just holding on to those funds so that we can build our endowment back. So the question is, well, why do you need an endowment? If you're not using it on an annual basis to the profits from it to help to run the school, well, we use it in a lot of ways. <laughs> One of the ways that, that that's been the best for us is that it's that, next, that nest egg for emergencies, isn't it? If we need it, it's there. But also, it's much better, it's much easier for us to borrow money at a very, very low interest rate than spend our own. And the healthy endowment makes it possible for us to uh, 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 borrow money at low interest. It helped us to increase and improve our bond rating. We moved up, what, a half a uh, yeah, a point in the bond rating, which therefore made it easy, made it possible for us to borrow money at a lower rate. And what do we do with that money? Well, we borrowed $50 million, $10 million will go into the MP 
NBC, uh, a, a large portion went to build out uh, 618, and to buy 618, and, and, and to complete it, and to buy and complete 916. Applications are up. They're looking good. 13% increase in application, 13, 14, 5, 10, someplace in there. But we're up than over a year ago. Murphy has talked to every one of those applicants individually. He was invited them all over to his house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're very, very pleased of what's, what's going on in that, and that we are still a very attractive place to prospective students. What the concern is, is that those students, the percentage of students, paid their deposits is down from a year ago. So although the applications are up, those paying deposits are down. So we don't know what that's going to mean in the fall. So I talked about the good thing about us being tuition driven, but that's also, there's also a downside to that too. Because if enrollment drops, then our income drops, doesn't it? So what do we do? So we are planning three scenarios with budgets, because we're really not sure where we're going to be next year. One scenario is that we drop in enrollment. And so we have to plan accordingly so we know where we're going to get that money from. If, if we have to do some scaling back, tightening even more, we have to plan accordingly for that. Another scenario is that it'll be flat. We won't have an increase, and we plan accordingly for that. And the third scenario, which is the hope scenario, is that we have a small increase. Regardless of that, tuition will not increase beyond 8 point, sorry, 2.86. So regardless of any of those scenarios, we're holding it there. You know, speaking of gifts, I forgot to mention that we've been working diligently to build our alumni base and, and to uh, bring our alums back into the, into the fold. As recently as three years ago, we had three alumni groups. One here in Chicago, one in Los Angeles, and one in New York. Now we have about 10. Alums all over the country pulling together. In fact, that there were three alumni parties associated with the Oscars. The largest of which was in Los Angeles, where we had about 250 alums to show up, one here in Chicago, and one in Las Vegas. Alums are now connecting with each other and connecting back to the institution. And that long-term relationship with alums back to the institution will be a benefit 